Eerly for sticking to their hashtag resist Trump. Not one Democrat voted for tax cuts and Democrats just shut down the government. The narrative now is that Democrats favored illegal immigrants over U.S. soldiers and things like getting our soldiers paid on time. Let's take it to the political power panel. Fox News political analyst Gianna Caldwell and Democrat strategist Wendy Osefa. Good to see you guys. Hi, Liz. Okay, Gianna, here's the lay of the land. Ten red state, ten red state Democrats that Trump won. They're up for re-election this year. All of them voted to stop the government shutdown. They're saying reopen the government. All of them, though, voted against the tax cuts. Well, these guys, you know, the Democrats need flyover states to seize back control of Congress. They just can't do it with the coast, right? So how are they going to do it? You know, what's interesting to me, because they continue with this resistance movement, the only resistance I believe is resist the devil and he shall flee from you, the biblical resistance. Democrats are in a complete spit tailspin thanks to the Republican Party. Honestly, the truth of the matter is what Democrats said would happen when it comes to the tax plan was, was proven to be a complete fallacy. We see that uh, companies all over the country and even folks from outside of the country are coming in and investing billions of dollars into our economy, hiring employees, raising wages, and even Apple repatriating $256 billion back into our economy. This is going to be very detrimental to the Democratic Party who chose to resist the prosperity of the American people. And as they continue in their resistance campaign, they're going to resist having any kind of message whatsoever to win back any chamber of Congress. So this is going to be very difficult for them. And although it looked as though the Republicans would lose seats, because obviously in the first term of any president, uh, any first term president, the, the person mm -hmm. lose seats generally since the Civil War. There's only been three times. This may be the fourth, that it hasn't happened. This may be the fourth time that Republicans or whoever's in power, which is the Republican Party, doesn't actually yeah, it's seats. about thanks to this tax reform. Yeah, it's about who gets out the base. It's about it's usually midterms are a protest vote. It's, a, it's usually a vote against something. But you know, Wendy, Chuck Schumer voted for the Reagan tax cuts. So did Ted Kennedy, and Joe Biden has been for tax cuts in the past. But watch this: we have red state Democrat West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin. He's still slamming the tax cuts just moments ago to our own Neil Cavuto. Let's take a listen. Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blank, find a big supporter of Hillary Clinton, has said. He thinks that uh, uh, Donald Trump is is driving this economy. Uh, we're also hearing Jamie Dimon over at J.P. Morgan Chase saying, because of these tax cuts, he thinks it's going to produce four percent growth. If if, if 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 that pans out, you've just paid for the tax cuts. If it pans out for ten years, thank God. If it doesn't pan out, go and look at your children and grandchildren and thank them because they'll be paying for it. Ten years? Is Manchin going to campaign on that? Will Manchin be in office long enough to find out after ten years, Wendy? I mean, that's a great question. We hope that the tax cuts do what they're supposed to do. But what we're seeing here is that a lot of people in which the president quoted are actually laying people off. Comcast laid off 500 people before the Christmas holiday. AT&T is bound to lay off thousands. And now we just found out that $46 billion in revenue was cut because of tourism costing people 40, So you see no upside. Jobs. Wait a minute. So no. that, th those, ta those job layoffs probably in the works for a long time. You said they were before the uh, during the Christmas not, holidays. Not Wait, tourism. Tourism. So you see no you see do you see zero upside in the tax cuts? You, no, you, you I, don't see anything good in the two million people getting bonuses? You see no good there. And like I said, if it pays off in the long run, yes. But what we're seeing is that trickle down, there are people losing jobs. The tourism is a direct reflection yeah, but they, of Donald Trump's rhetoric. It's not yes. the, it's it's because of restructuring the U.S. economy, as it usually goes. Gianna, here's the thing. There are, companies are also immediately raising pay, whereas states are phasing yeah. in minimum wage pay increases over years out. A lot of companies are raising pay immediately. That has to have a positive effect, right, Gianna? Absolutely it does. And what we saw over the years, we would talk about individual states, we talk about Illinois or anywhere else, we see that governors and uh, state legislatures, uh, or rather companies in these, in these um, states have said, hey, we'll be willing to raise the uh, our, our uh, minimum wage if we get tax reform. They've said that in numerous conversations. We need it at the federal level, we need it at the local level. They said, That's what companies have said. And we see that we have a GOP that has delivered mm -hmm. on that commitment and we're seeing uh, companies operate immediately, react immediately okay. to benefit the American people. So companies I don't are see how anyone can say that it's not an upside. Jobs. I hear you. We hear you, Wendy. All right, but you gonna, Before tax reform was ever in play. Okay, thank you so much, Gianna and Wendy. You both will be back later. And be sure to catch the counselor. <laughs>
Liberals and a lot of Democrats are furious with you right now. What's your response to all that anger? Well, look, we've advanced the cause. What people have to understand, and I think most people do, most of the Democrats here on Capitol Hill perfectly understand, we don't have the levers of power. All of us in the Democratic caucus, not just the moderates, but the liberals as well, came to the view that if we carried it on much longer, two things would happen. A, no one would budge. The public would lose support of the shutdown. People love the dreamers, but don't want the government shut down for it. So we cut the best deal that we could. Pretty blunt talk from Democrat Senator Chuck Schumer. He's now coming under fire from the left over giving in to stopping the government shutdown. It was sparked by the fight over DACA. The minority leader pleading with Rachel Maddow that Democrats did cut the best deal they tried to, the best deal that they could. Let's bring back the political panel. Uh, Wendy, it sounded like uh, Chuck Schumer had some common sense and was blunt talk coming from him in that conversation. What do you think? I, I think that Schumer has to also be very careful as well. There are a lot of Democrats like myself who begin to question why was there even a government shutdown. And I've said this once and I'll say it again. I feel that there are times that the Democrats lack a spine. And we have to be honest with ourselves. But what I want us to underscore is the fact that in a recent poll, 59% of Americans said that they blamed President Trump for the government shutdown. So I don't think that this will nefariously hurt him. But I do think that the yeah, Democratic they, Party they could be misled. That could be the, mis which that way could be the media not reporting that it was DACA was the wedge issue no, for why the Democrats <laughs> shut it down. I mean, it was the far left who yanked the party so far to the left, Giano. I mean, that's why it was shut down. But I want to get to to this point. Chuck Schumer used to be against uh, chain my Well, let me back up. Ch uh, Chuck Schumer is not liking the President Trump's uh, immigration policies. But back in the day, Giano and guys, Chuck Schumer, when he was a congressman, he did support skills-based immigration and he was against chain migration let's take a watch we're saying it should not simply be family relationships that determine who comes here this bill says that if you have a skill that america needs we're going to accept you what do you think Giano? well during that time there was a lot of common sense Democrats. That time is obviously left. I mean, outside of Wendy, that is. Uh, <laughs> we have Democrats that are in elected offices who really want to control and have the power. They know that um, the minority majority will be the Hispanic population and others, and they want to get on board the train nowadays. And to reference the point that Wendy just made in terms of that survey, interestingly enough, she's right that the folks did blame President Trump, but they also blame the Democratic Party, and they gave the least amount of blame to the Republican Party yeah, that's because at point, the end right. of the day this was the Democratic Party's fault. There shouldn't have been a shutdown and Americans wanted to see health care go to the many people, the children that needed it and not have it shut down over something uh, that maybe didn't impact them as much. So I can understand that. These are American citizens and it makes sense. So we will have a vote on DACA soon enough, sure, and as we should and uh, we'll make those points later as to what the outcome is and why the outcome was what it was. Let's get to President Trump tweet he blasted Chuck Schumer's decision to pull the border wall from negotiations over the DACA program saying quote crying Chuck Schumer fully understands especially especially after his humiliating defeat that there is, if there is no wall there's no dreamy deal there's no DACA deal we must have safety and security along with a strong military for our great people uh, you know Wendy Chuck Schumer telling Rachel Maddow that the Democrat Party doesn't have any leverage right now is that the position they want to be in no, that's not the position we want to be in. That's why we're looking forward to the midterms where we will reclaim the House. Uh, but, you know, right now I, I question <laughs> the president because during this whole time of conversation, of negotiation, he did not have a role. So for him to sit there and send that tweet is highly questionable. Why do you say he didn't own, have a role? You're saying he was just silent own, through. He didn't. He really didn't talk a lot was, or do a lot during the negotiations. He, he but he's the president. Himself. He's, and, and that is the issue. But, but, but you know, Wendy, wait, let, me, let me back up. If he had stepped in at this point, would that have made things more incendiary and just made it, you know, let me back up. In government shutdowns in years past, presidents have not stepped in as forcefully as they have. Uh, and and so is he's just, he's just doing what other presidents did. 
No, actually, let's underscore the point that the president said in 2011 and 2013, the current president said that if the government shuts down, it is the president's okay. fault. So it underscores that he has said that his leadership style right. is one that he would step in. So well, this looks like example it worked what he did. shows right. a flaw. Okay, Jana, Wendy, thank you so real, much for your time. Real quick, real, real quick, if I can, the largest liberal publication and black publication of right. Root just put out a piece called Democrats Are Not Our Friends. So the midterms are going to look oh, a lot gee. more okay, interesting, we especially there. with tax Guys, reforms <laughs> and people distrusting <laughs> We ran out of Democratic time. Thank Party. you so much. I really appreciate you too. <laughs> Democrats were withdrawing their offer to fund President's.